if this is your first video like of me, like just go back and start binge watching because it tells a story. It, it shows each step of the way. And if you watch them in order, you'll understand me and get me much, much better than just watching one video and completely judging me off of that. I Shalom everyone, I'm S and I'm taking you on my conversion journey. So I've realized I've been making some mistakes and these are a couple of habits, well a few habits that I need to break and I wanted to know if you guys uh, had any tips for me on how to really become better with not doing these things that I'm about to mention. So coming from a totally different culture, different religion, different environment, there are things that I find myself doing unconsciously, unintentionally. They're just from just habit of how my life used to be. And I'm trying to train myself to become more self-aware and to not get so in my head and, and um, just also, and also not to be so hard on myself because we are all human and um, I'm taking you guys on this journey with me. So I wrote down 10 habits that, well, 11. I, I wrote just another one. Then. <laughs> so these are 11 habits that I want to break and um, you will go through each and every one of them and you guys tell me uh, if there's any extra steps I could take to, to fix them or if it's just, just let it go, it's never gonna change type attitude. I wanna let you guys know I do have a Patreon now and it is up. So feel free to sign up for it. If things are a little weird, don't worry, I'm sorry. It's still the beginning of this, but I will be posting a lot of videos on my Patreon, going in depth, going in detail about my journey and all that I've experienced and some of the connections I've made and really trying to to get you guys so involved that you feel like you're like right here with me on this journey, right next to me. And uh, I only want people who want the best for me, who, you know, are by my side cheering me on and are rooting for me. So Patreon link down below, go ahead and check that out. So let's get into today's video. So the first habit, that I want to break is calling the synagogue church. <laughs> I've said this in front of my rabbi, I've said it in front of my Jewish family, in front of my Jewish friends, and I'm like, okay, this is, it's, I know it's a synagogue, why do I keep doing this? And I think I keep doing this because I keep thinking like this holy environment is like a church, and I need to figure out a way how to break that. I could just not say synagogue. <laughs> I could just not even talk about it. Or I can just uh, start to realize, okay, like it's called a synagogue because this is what we call it. <laughs> and I was so embarrassed when I said that to him and he understood, he was very like caring and, and was like, listen, it's not a big deal. You're converting. And if you're converting and you make this mistake, just don't be too hard on yourself. It's it's still taking me some time to adjust and for for the differences and and make the changes that need to be made. So it's not uncommon for you to make that mistake. I've made it plenty of times and I'm still converting. <laughs> so number two is recognizing my mezuzah when I walk in through, through the door of my apartment and my bedroom. Sometimes I don't even, I, I, I don't even touch it. Sometimes I don't even realize that it's there. And that to me is a problem because I am living in my, my apartment, you know, I'm alone. I should be recognizing that my mezuzah is there and just, thanking Hashem that I'm able to have another day, walk out the door, um, walk back in, and I, I, you know, I wake up and just embrace his grace and all the blessings he has for me. And I, it's embarrassing to know that I just walked, walked right out the door and I don't 
recognize that the mezuzah is there to protect me. And um, yeah, that's just a really, really bad habit. And I'm going to be more aware that that it's there now. Uh, I'm just having trouble. Like it's it's just it's just hard to. It's such a minute thing, but it's it's a pretty big deal. And um, I just want to want to make sure that I don't go another day without blessing, saying a blessing, or thanking Hashem that I've walked in through this door another time because there might be a day that I don't walk through those doors and I hope that it's not anytime soon or at least not until this conversion ends but uh yeah so that's that's another bad habit that I need to break number three is lighting candles now I light with my when I'm ever Whenever I'm with my Jewish family, I light the candles with them. I light it on Shabbat. Sometimes when I'm home, this this I'm not gonna not gonna like knock myself too hard on this because I've only missed it twice <laughs> since I started converting and it killed me. And it was just I just wasn't keeping track of time. I was probably cleaning and cooking and, and reading and just I missed uh I missed Shabbat. I missed the the time i was supposed to light the candles and i got like a weird there was a weird energy around and i just i was like okay i, I can't forget to do this you know and i don't want to make it seem like i'm trying to be perfect because i know plenty of jewish people who don't even light candles or forget to light them but this is this is the standard i'm holding myself too, and I, I want to be accountable during this whole entire process. So for me to light candles, it's a very big deal. And it should be it, it should be something that means a lot to you too, if you're converting. Uh, I, I guess going from never doing something like this and um, going into a habit that every week you have to, you should be lighting your Shabbat candles and saying your blessings. And having Shabbat dinner, I just, I, I just get sidetracked. So I'm trying my best to, to just not get to that level. And I've been very good. I, like I said, I've only missed it twice, but that's two times too many. The fourth thing is saying Hashem's name in vain. This is probably the most frequent thing. I've done it on this channel. I've, I do it in person. I don't know, like. Even in Christianity, you're not supposed to be doing that. But I, it's something that I really am trying my best to work on. It's something that I should not be doing. And I, I, I try to say Hashem, I try to say, I try to not even say it. <laughs> but there are times that it slips through and I feel guilty. I, I feel like I shouldn't have done that. And I also feel like whatever I just said has no value or much significance. So I try to find ways to explain things without using his name in vain. I also try not to like even involve it in the conversation unless we are talking about something, especially on this channel. I do say Hashem a lot, but there are times that it's gonna slip through and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm really trying. <laughs> The fifth thing is saying a bracha before I eat. So this can be a little bit confusing because I'm still figuring out the best ways to incorporate kashrut into my life. And so far during this conversion process, this that has been like the toughest thing for me because I'm, I have different families, different cultures, people always trying to give me food and I have to explain, you know, like it's, it's, uh, it's definitely a tough process. So sometimes I feel weird to say a blessing on non-kosher food, but I'm like, okay, I haven't converted yet. I'm still in the process. So is it a sin? Am I being sinful? Is this food not blessed? You know, these are, these are definitely 
I'm, I should write this down. This is a good question for my rabbi. So I'm, I'm trying my best to, especially when I'm eating kosher food, not just on Shabbat, but you know, when I do cook my meats, when I do cook my dairy separate, I try my best to just say a blessing and make sure that I acknowledge that I'm eating. There are people who don't even eat. There are people who don't get opportunity to have such a blessed meal. So I tr I'm trying my best to just not miss a blessing like that. Another thing that I screw up on is, well, the sixth thing is saying Shema. When I wake up, I'm good with the Modani, but saying Shema is, is a, I don't know. I don't know why that's, that's difficult to me. I guess because we have to say it throughout the day and sometimes I like, I'm just, I just, I need to work on my self-awareness and bring things down because I'm somebody who like, I need a schedule. I like things on point. I like to be on time. I like to be organized. So when things aren't close to perfect, I freak out. So sometimes I, things could just go over my head and I'm not even self-aware that oh, I didn't even say the Shema when I woke up, woke up. I didn't, you know, like I didn't say any type of blessing, like, you know. So I'm trying my best to really whoo, take it down a notch and, and just be more present in every aspect of my life. So now, number seven is non-kosher foods. Um, I'm not fully kosher yet. It's not a secret. I'm not. I'm not perfect. Like I said, I'm, I'm converting. And not to let, let me sidetrack a bit because I've noticed I've been getting comments, especially on my older videos. Um, I've only had this channel for a few months, but um, especially in uh, which video. I think it's the reform versus um, orthodox, and I was giving my examples of my my situation with both sectors, and people are commenting and saying like, "Why are you doing this? Why aren't you covered up? Why aren't you just?" I'm like, okay, in each and every one of my videos, I am taking, I am one step closer to Judaism, and. I am learning things in each video. And this is why I decided to make these videos with you guys to take you on a journey with me. Videos I posted three months ago means that there's information three months ago that I didn't know. And now present, I'm much more aware. I'm, I'm, much, I, I'm much more knowledgeable in the Jewish culture. So I think it's, I think it's, it was stressing me. I'm not gonna lie. It was stressing me out in the beginning because I'm like, people are like, put dress dress accordingly, like cover up, and I'm like, these I didn't know. Like these are I didn't know. I wasn't aware. That was in the beginning, and like I'm not saying I'm so far into my conversion that I know everything, but I'm I'm saying this is a process. This is a journey, a conversion journey, and if you haven't been watching. Like I encourage you, if this is your first video like of me, like just go back and start binge watching because it tells a story. It, it shows each step of the way. And if you watch them in order, you'll understand me and get me much, much better than just watching one video and completely judging me off of that. I know me saying that maybe some of you will listen, maybe some of you will not, but that's just, that's just how this is this is going to go with uh, the type of content I create. It's it's not, it's just going along with what's going on with me in real life. That being said, right now in the process, I'm not, I'm not fully kosher yet. And there's reasons for that. One, I'm eating this elephant one piece at a time and being fully kosher to me is is going to be the toughest thing in this process because I'm dealing with 
multiple environments that d know nothing about Judaism and know nothing about being kosher or, or the laws of Kashrut. Like they don't understand it. So I have to be fully aware, fully, fully know and understand being kosher first. And then I have to implement the practices. And sometimes it could be, it could be, I, I, sometimes I'm just not that confident yet to just tell someone, no, I'm not like, I'm not eating that. I can't, I don't know. It's like a weird feeling I get to, to tell people that I'm kosher, that I eat kosher. Um, I guess I'm just afraid. I'm, I'm, I don't want to say afraid. I guess I just don't want to deal with people who are going to ridicule me for becoming Jewish because it's happened at work. It's happened in real life. It's, it's happened in my family. So I guess a part of me is still like running away from people like that and like not dealing with like people just asking me silly questions, you know? So I, I need to find like this. If you didn't hear anything in this video, this is the most important. Help me. I need your help to, to help me be more aware of Kashrut. And I'm, I'm, I started looking at labels. I also, I love to cook, but like, I want to be able to have the confidence to just be like, nope, not eating that. <laughs> nope, not eating that. Nope, I'm sorry. And like, some responses to tell people because sometimes I just get stuck. I'm just like, oh no, I can't. And then I'm like, okay, I, I guess I could still do it. I guess I'll eat that, you know? And I don't know, I, I guess I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. I'm not a perfect Jew. I think people here are like trying to think that I, I know everything or that I, I'm like this perfect girl. I'm, I've said this multiple times, I am not. I still have a lot to learn. If you look at my bookshelf, literally all of these books are Jewish books that I need to be reading. And I'm, I'm, I'm reading, I'm learning a lot, but it's, it's gonna take, it's taking me time and I'm not in a rush. <laughs> I'm not in a rush. Um, okay, so number eight is following the Jewish calendar. It's not really such a huge thing, but especially like around this time, with the high holidays, maybe Passover, like knowing and understanding each month from Asar to Tishrei, like I wanna be able to know in depth what each month means, the numeric number behind it, numeric number, <laughs> the the code behind each other, the meaning, the, the, the sign, like everything about the Jewish calendar I want to really be knowledgeable in. So if anyone has any good resources for that, like comment down below and let me know so I could check that out too. Um, number nine is planning Christian holidays. Okay, so this is like a weird thing that I, I noticed. I had a coworker say to me, oh, so when are you gonna put up your Christmas tree? And this is somebody who knows that I'm converting. And I'm like, Christmas tree. First of all, first things first, I'm cheap. I don't like to spend money. And my family knows that I do not like, um, I don't like Christmas. And it's not like, it's a beautiful time with family, but it turns into this massive spending frenzy. That's like the biggest turnoff for me. And I don't like when I would celebrate Christmas, I like I like to give to the kids. I think it's a cute kid holiday, but it also, it, it turned into, it has, the gift giving part is nothing religious. It's, it's something that us humans created. Uh, we started to do that. And now as adults, you know, I'm a responsible adult. I have obligations to attend to. So I can't be spending this kind of money. And I've made it very clear to my family, I don't like this holiday. Uh, eventually I'm gonna break free from our tradition, which is to spend all this money on gifts. Uh, my mother's on my side, <laughs> but like, I don't like to put up trees. I'm not a like a decor crazy person. Although I have to show you guys my room. 
I have to, I have to show you guys my room. Uh, later, maybe later. Um, I've gotten really better with design and I said that I was going to do it up. But um, yeah, I'm not somebody who needs to decorate a Christmas tree to, to feel the Christmas spirit. or I never was like that. So when someone is asking me if I'm planning for Christian holidays, I'm like, no, I've never been a fan of any, almost any, almost every of them I, I don't like. I, I never cared for Easter. I've never cared. I've cared for Christmas, but then it, it turned into this thing. So I just don't care for it. And I think that's it. <laughs> uh, so I'm like, I don't, it's not a big deal to me, but they were just so shocked that I said that I wasn't going to put up a Christmas tree. I'm like, but I'm converting. <laughs> I, I just don't, I think people just, I don't know, people just have an idea of like, you're converting, but you could still just do it. Like, who's gonna know? And I'm like, I'm gonna know and Hashem's gonna know. And I don't want that on my conscience. Like if I'm converting for me and I wanna be able to do these things and live a Jewish life, that means I'm not celebrating Christian holidays. <laughs> so we're heading towards that time of the year and this will probably be the first year that I'm like oh I'm not doing this and my family's going to be like what why like why aren't you I was like because I don't want to do it <laughs> and um we'll see we'll see how that goes um so another thing number 10 is dealing with hateful comments this kind of ties in with what I was saying before I I love everybody. I love all of you guys, even the ones that don't think that I'm Jewish, don't like accept me, which is fine. I went into this knowing all this. And when somebody makes a life-changing decision like this, trust me, it's going to take more than a random person who doesn't know me personally, who says nasty things for me to change my mind and completely neglect all the hard work I've been putting in towards this conversion. I like I I know as I grow, as my channel grows and more people share my videos that people are going to get even more nasty and the hate is going to be real and they're probably going to be critiquing every little thing that I say or do. I'm letting you guys know that I say a lot of stuff. I say a lot of stuff, some things I don't even remember but I will always be consistent in my conservative values, polit politically and religiously. And that's something that I've been saying since day one. And I know certain people are probably listening to my, watching my videos and have an assumption made or, you know, want me to be a certain way. I'm like, this is who I am. This is who I am. So, if you want to say something hateful, say it. Ooh, I'm not a real Jew. I'm not this. I need to do this. Like, say it. I'd rather you say it and be honest because what that's preparing me for is for real life situations whenever I actually encounter them. And bring it. I'm ready. <laughs> But I also love the, the the positive feedback and all you guys that are supporting me. Mm -hmm. Love it. Um, okay. So my last one is labeling myself. This is a bad habit for me because I picked this bad habit off of other people. And this is just labeling myself as the black Jewish girl. And I don't want to be seen that way. You can see my skin is black, like I am a black woman, yes, and I love it. I love every part of me, love my hair, love my skin, love my style, you know, but I'm not gonna label myself as the black Jewish girl. I'm not doing it. I'm just a woman who's converting to Judaism and I found this this wonderful culture and I love it. And that's that's what I'm sticking with because I don't, because I, I don't want to put me 
up here and then there's other black Jews who who may feel like they need to compete with me like I don't I don't want that at all I want to embrace all types of converts all types of colors all you guys can can come and talk to me I don't care if we dif we different we have different uh I don't care if we have different views politically or or even religiously that's fine but what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to label myself as the black Jewish guru because that's that's not who I am. I'm somebody who's on a journey, who's learning, just like you. Just This is a forever thing. So I wanted to stop doing that to myself because I don't, I'm a human being. So these are all habits that I want to break. So if you guys have any feedback for me, let me know in the comments. And don't forget to sign up for my Patreon. Shalom. Thank mm -hmm. you.